Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard video. Today we shall be continuing with the series of videos looking at the 8th edition reveals released by Games Workshop. And guys, today is a biggie. Today is the first one that I would say majorly affects the Imperial Guard and today it is the shooting phase. Uh, this is going to be a semi-blind sort of look through. I'm just going to put out my sort of initial gut feelings about things. I have skimmed the article, but I haven't sort of done an in-depth analysis of that, and I'm going to do it now. So you'll get my sort of, thought of it a bit differently, you'll get my sort of raw feelings of, about the things as I read them in depth. So let's, let's start with it. So the first profile, it says... Um, First paragraph, we'll be hitting on a bit a fixed ballistic skill, which is similar to how we do now. So you just hit on a 4+, plus. So, you know, if you hit on a 4+, plus, you hit on a 4+, plus kind of thing. Or if you've got ballistic skill 4+, plus, you hit on a 4+, plus, I should say. Uh, multiple damage weapons, okay. When you select it to shoot, much like today, they can fire all their weapons at the enemy. You can't shoot, however, if you advance this turn or if you fell back from combat. Okay, I understand that. So if you advance, which is essentially the new kind of run where you move and run in the uh, movement phase now, that's been confirmed. That's fine. If you fall back from combat, you can't do anything but fall back from combat. I appreciate that. That's fine. So they're the sort of restrictions on shooting. Now, you also can't shoot if an enemy is within one inch of you. The exception to this rule is pistols. Models with these handheld firearms can shoot at the closest enemy target in the shooting phase, even if they themselves are locked in combat. This is going to make characters with pistols incredibly deadly up close. Interesting. Let's, that's, let's break it down to the two halves that it is. So the first thing, you can't shoot if there's an enemy within one inch of you. That I kind of understand. If I'm a guardsman and an enemy is that close to me, I'm not really going to have time to shoot at him. Um, also, I'm probably at that point. I'm probably going to be preparing for, you know, fixing bayonets, preparing for combat. So, okay, that first thing that leaps to mind is if there is still an Overwatch rule in the game, if there still is one, if you in your movement phase move within one inch of your enemy, but and then char charging the assault phase. Does that mean your enemy won't get to do Overwatch if there still is Overwatch? That could be interesting. That could be very interesting. Um, yeah, so I, I have no real... I have no real issues with that because at the end of the day, you can always move back. You can always move back so you're over an inch away and then shoot your opponents. And if the game is still done on a model-by-model -model basis... You'll only have to move back a little bit. Okay, I kind of dig that. I can sort, you know, with some of the models, and some of them will be shooting normally, some they'll be shooting maybe differently, you know, if it's a heavy weapon or something. Anyway, the next thing, models with handheld firearms can shoot at the close enemy target in the shooting phase, even if they sell to locked in combat. So if you're locked in combat, essentially, if you're locked in combat, you can shoot at the person you're locked in combat with. Okay, I I don't really have an issue with this because it kind of makes sense, you know, um, and it kind of makes more sense because currently pistols just add plus one attack in close combat. Um, but realistically, if you're shooting someone with a pistol in close combat, you're going to use the weapons profile. So I guess that kind of... That makes sense because... If you've got a pistol and a power sword, why should the extra attack from the pistol benefit from like the AP of the power sword? It shouldn't really. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and for for guard, that's not a huge. I mean, for for regular guard, when your sergeant's got a pistol, that's kind of like meh, lasgun. Mo this what I should say is most pistols. Basic pistols like bolt pistols, las pistols, sluggers, that those kind of things. They generally have the same strength as the user that's wielding them. So a las pistol is strength three, a bolt is strength four. So 
it's a buff for some people, so like orcs, which look as a strength 4, and a base orc is normally strength 3. That means the orcs are getting an extra strength 4 attack each turn. I imagine if you get to shoot with your pistol in the shooting phase, you won't get an extra, in whilst in close combat, you won't get an extra close combat attack with it. I think this will replace it, which is interesting. Um, it does make things like plasma pistols really, like, potentially useful. Because, you know, you can shoot your plasma pistol, and then when you get into combat, you know, you can also shoot it as well. If someone sh yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. It I, I wonder how it will pair well, because I imagine most close combats, people will be falling back out of them. I don't th think most people... I don't think people will be sticking around in combat. I think combats will generally consist of people falling, you know, someone gets charged, they'll fall back with their unit and then charge in with another one, maybe. Um, so I don't see why a lot of... I don't understand why most... I don't see where this pistol rule is actually going to come into effect, actually, because I imagine there'll be very few combats where people are going to be slugging it out. I imagine... Close combats will probably consist of units pairing up and tag teaming in and out of combat. So I'm not sure how the pistol being able to shoot in close combat is going to be actually. Uh, I'm not sure how effective it's actually going to be, but definitely make it definitely means taking a plasma pistol on your imperial guard sergeant is no longer the worst idea in the world. So there you go. I kind of like it. A little buff to pistols is always a nice thing because currently they are pointless. Currently taking a grav pistol or a plasma pistol or anything like that is a waste of time. Um, when picking a target, you won't be able to shoot enemies that are in combat with other units, much like the cone edition. However, you can fall back from combat in your movement phase, allowing other units to fire at your opponent at the expense of your own actions this turn. Expect to see cunning generals deploying their armies in ways to take full advantage of this. Yeah, okay. Right, so that's exactly what I just said then. Yeah, so you you can... If you've got a unit that's locked in combat at the beginning of your turn, you move back and then you just shoot the shit out of them. That's, that's interesting. We covered that one in the movement phase video, but I'll go over that again. So, essentially, guys, imagine you have... Imagine you've got three lines of Imperial Guardsmen. What you can effectively do now is, if your first squad or first line gets attacked in close combat and overrun, but like one or two or three or four guys survive, in the current edition, and if they stick around if you've got a Commissar, in the current edition, that means the rest of your army can't shoot whilst those three or four guys sit there. And then inevitably they get munched in your turn. And then in your enemy's turn they charge you again. So currently that's what happens. With this it now means that if your first line starts showing signs of being overrun. Or is very obviously getting overrun. You can just pull the stragglers back in your turn. And then unleash your army again. So it, it, it genu I've been doing this for years now. But it genuinely allows for layered defense. It, when you think about it, if you go back to a few videos ago when I was talking about the Melter Hedge, this really allows you to pull off one hell of a Melter Hedge. Because you can have squad after squad after squad in rank after rank, and the enemy can charge in, and you'll be able to Melter Hedge them with Wave 1, then Melter Hedge them with Wave 2, then Melter Hedge them with Wave 3, and they'll never ever be able to not be within your Melter Hedge. So that's actually pretty... When you think about it like that, it, this, that's a really big boost for guard. Looking at this from a garrison's point of view, no longer do we have to stick around in combat if we don't want to. We can now pull back and have no issues whatsoever. That works for multiple small units and it works for blobs as well. I think it's very powerful for blobs potentially because it could mean you get charged, you lose like half your guys or you know you lose 20 out of 30 guys in the blob. You know you're not going to be able to the rest of the blob's going to be able to do much. So you pull that blob backwards and unload with the rest of your army. Could make conscripts really, really powerful. Could make conscripts really fucking brutally powerful. Just by having rank after rank of conscripts. 
powerful. Good for guard. That's a good thing for guard. The pistols is okay, and but that moving back thing is really a big boost for guard, I think. Now, next paragraph. Heavy weapons are worth talking about. They no longer snap fire if you move, and instead they have a flat minus one to hit modifier for moving units. This applies to all models with heavy weapons, vehicles included. There are a few other factors that affect hit rolls too. Smoke launchers on a vehicle, for example, have the same effect of minus one to hit. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. That seems to me... Ooh. Hmm, that is very interesting. That does seem initially like a bit of a kick in the balls to armor. I mean, think about it. Mass want to hit with every, you know, with your Lehman Russ. However, if blast weapons no longer roll to hit, if blast weapons hit automatically and just do when we don't know this, this is speculation, but if blast weapons like the flamer and uh you know the the Lemus battle tank, the battle cannon, if they automatically hit and just do a certain number of wounds, that could make things like the demolisher cannon and the battle cannon incredibly powerful because you could just move forward with your Lehman Russ. Oh look, minus one to hit. Oh look, I don't care because I automatically hit. That could be Deadly. We don't know yet how that works, but that could be absolutely deadly. You just move forward with the Inrust. You do not give a fuck about Maz want to hit because you've got a blast weapon, and you just start lob that. That could. I know a lot. Of, a lot of people at the moment say that blast leaving Russes aren't worth it. This could go a long way to making people consider the large. Well, what would previously be the ordnance Russes. Because, sure, now you can move forward with your exterminator, but if you move forward with it, that's minus one to hit with every single one of your guns. That's not good. However, you move forward with your blast Lehman Russ, and hey -oh, hit automatically, potentially. Very powerful. Very, very powerful, potentially. The smoke launch as being minus one to hit is... I don't know. I don't, that, I don't know if that's good or bad. Um... It will be interesting to see if it stacks with cover because I know cover does stuff like that now, but um, we'll have to see. We'll be interested to see how that works if it if if that can if it can make units almost impossible to hit because night fighting might be minus one to hit, smoke might be minus one to hit, and if an enemy vehicle moves or enemy it moves with a heavy weapon, it might be minus one to hit. You know that could be minus three to hit on the first turn. Could very much. Uh, negate alpha strike armies or at least tone alpha strike armies down like drop pod assaults could very much do that uh, so yeah smoke launchers i'm not so bothered about the other one though is interesting we'll have to see how that we'll have to see how lehman rust battle tanks and demolishers and eradicators have to see how they work with the new to hit modifiers um if it's if it's like you still have to roll to hit with them, then they're fucked. Then that's that is the the death knell of the blast weapons. But I think they may hit automatically. If they do, that's a fucking wowzers. Right. Anyway. Uh, next paragraph. The last big change we're going over today is cover. Currently, cover saves give a blanket save to all units, and one that only comes into effect if the shot would otherwise ignore their armor. In the new Warhammer Forty Thousand, cover is a bonus to your armor save. Critically, this ability o often only applies to certain types of unit. For example, only infantry gain the bonus of cover from a crater. Hmm. This interaction works quite nicely with the modifiers to armor saves of certain guns. That means that when someone is trying to hide behind a wall or barricade, if your weapon has a high enough armor penetration, you can shoot them through a wall. There are also a few weapons that ignore this bonus to cover, bonus cover to armor effect, such as those wielded by Chaos Noise Marines and Lehman Rus Nova cannons. Hmm, that is interesting. 
Now, cover is a guardsman's best friend. Ooh, ah, guys, that could be huge. Imagine a wall gives you plus two to your armor save. Imagine this. Imagine you're getting shot at by a unit of space marines with bolters or any weapon whatsoever that doesn't have an AP. Suddenly your guardsmen are rocking power armor. That could potentially be a huge bonus to, to guardsmen. I mean, obviously weapons such as weapons which have m minus one AP and stuff, they'll still, you know, they'll, you'll just need cover for those for them to basically just be negated that minus one. You know, if you have behind a head, you get, you know, plus one to your armor save and you've got like an assault cannon, that's minus one to your armor save. That's interesting though, guys. That, for units like Space Marines, that will make them really tough to root out of cover. Think about that, guys. Imagine if you were trying to shoot a bunch of LAS guns at some Space Marines behind a wall and they get plus one to their cover save. You're looking at every Space Marine potentially being in a suit of Terminator armor because they're all going to have two plus saves. <sighs> that cuts both ways, guys. That makes our LAS guns going to struggle. But it does also mean that enemy small arms are really going to struggle against us. Interesting is all I can say. I think that is good for guard survivability. It will remain to see how effective, how it will remain to see how much that will cut into the guard's firepower. But we shall see. Um, yes, okay. It, one last thing, we'll be back tomorrow with the news on the charge phase, so maybe no longer called the assault phase. Interesting. Right, so that's some pretty significant changes. Let's just go over it. So ballistic skill is pretty much the same, although you'll now have ballistic skill modifiers. Okay. Uh, you can fall back in your movement phase and allow the rest of your arm, if you're locked in combat, and allow the rest of your arm to shoot the shit out of someone who's assaulting you. That's huge. Uh, pistols got a buff which is good um, and cover heavy weapons now no longer snap fire which is great I didn't really cover that all that much but heavy weapons no longer snap firing in your infantry squads means the ability to move forward with heavy weapons has become uh, better you no, lo no longer must, must one definitely conga line it is now possible to move forward with those heavy weapons. Heavy weapons like heavy bolters uh, are pretty good now because they'll that extra shot to hit will make a huge difference if you've got a minus one modifier. Hmm, this could be interesting. This could be interesting. So, yeah, overall, I like the changes to the shooting phase. I think, I think they buff shooting even further. That's a good thing for guard. It will remain to be seen how that affects armies such as Tau and Eldar. I mean, that is overall a good thing for the Imperial Guard. Makes, I mean, imagine if we're behind a wall and we're getting shot by those goddamn Tau pulse rifles. We're, doesn't matter, we've got our three plus, got a three plus armor save. That, I'm optimistic, guys. I'm optimistic. Um, all this stuff sounds good for the Guard. That's all I can say. Um, the shooting phase sounds like it's going to be good for the guard. And hopefully all our vehicles will still come with smoke launchers for freebies. So that's great. Um, so yeah, overall, I'm pretty fucking positive about that, guys. I want to know what you guys think. Do you think it's going to mean we're going to see the death of assault armies? If assault armies are forever going to be just getting stuck out in the open, getting shot to pieces? Or do you think... My prediction will be that people will be able to consolidate from one combat into the next. I reckon that could be a thing, guys. So keep your ears and eyes posted and let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. P.S. guys. P.S. I just want to add something onto the end of that video. Sorry, I uh, forgot to mention it. Something I've just realized and I didn't want to leave it out of this shooting phase video. The removal of snapshots, what does that tell you guys? That means potentially no more invisible death stars. If there's no such thing as snapshots, that to me says invisibility has gone.
that also means that if invisibility does exist, weapons like flamers and potentially blast weapons will be still be able to hit them if they hit automatically. Any weapon, you know, if blast weapons hit automatically and you've got an invisible Death Star barreling down at you, there will be nothing more satisfying than potentially automatically hitting it with two or three demolisher cannons. That will be awesome. So I just wanted to mention that before I forget. Sorry for not including that. It literally, as I ended the recording, I thought, holy crap, I've missed that really important thing out. So no snapshots equals potentially no invisible death stars equals the final death knell of those stupid bullshit invisible death stars guys keep our fingers crossed crossed let's praise the emperor and pray to him that he has delivered us from those bullshit op invis death stars thank you guys for listening and i'll see you guys next time